Muy buenas noches, amados amigos y hermanos. Good evening, beloved friends and brethren present. Y todos los que están and all those en who are naciones. in different nations. Un al Greetings Bermudez to missionary Miguel Bermudez Marín, who is there in Ecuador tonight. It is a great blessing for me to be with you, to share some moments of fellowship with you around the Word of God and His program pertaining to this end time. For today, we will have the introduction to the subject of next Sunday's Bible School Today, we will have a chat related to next Sunday's subject as an introduction, for which we read in St. Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 to 31, and also chapter 24, verses 34 and on, 34 and on to 39, and Say Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 to 31, says the following. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And that same 24th chapter, verse, verse 32 and on, let's continue. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And this same 24th chapter, verse 27 says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. On this occasion, our subject is connected to the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Lord. In the introduction to this subject, 
for next Sunday's Bible School, we will have, under this subject, be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. The coming of the Son of Man as what? As it is promised. Be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. That will be the subject for next Sunday's Bible School, God willing. And as an introduction, we will chat about some scriptures. We will chat about some scriptures about some promises there are for the mystical body of Christ, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated if you're so kind. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke more about the second coming of the Son of Man than about the first coming of the Son of Man. The coming of the Son of Man in the time of Malachi is promised in chapter 3. And as the first coming was, the second coming of the Son of Man will be parallel. Which will shine as the lightning from east to west. Chapter 3 of Malachi, verse 1 says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, in the first coming of Christ, the coming of the Son of Man was the coming of the angel of the covenant in whom was God. That is why in Christ was the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus was the Father. Christ said, I do nothing of myself, but what I see the Father do. In other words, first he would see in a vision what God wanted him to do. He would see God performing the miracles. And then Jesus would come and carry him out on earth. And God himself, through Jesus, showed in another dimension what he would do through Jesus in this earthly dimension. That is why it said, I work as I see the Father work. The Father works and I work. In other words, the Father says, Arise in that heavenly dimension. And Jesus sees him and he sees the person whom he said that to, and then he sees him here on earth and tells him the same thing that he saw God the Father say in another dimension. As simple as that. That is why Jesus said, I do nothing of myself, but as I see, and as I hear the Father, and as I see, that is what I do. In other words, Jesus says that he didn't do anything. It was God the Father through him. It was the Lord God Almighty, creator of the heavens and of the earth, through the angel of the covenant, who was incarnate in Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. A body that was created by God through the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary and multiplied cell after cell until that body was formed 
which was born through the Virgin Mary there in Bethlehem of Judea. And the singing angels came, a choir of angels came to sing at the birth of the Messiah or to the Messiah who had been born. Because when a king is born, there is singing. It is the most important moment for a nation. When a king is born, who will be the heir to the kingdom, and at some point he will take the throne of that kingdom. And in Bethlehem of Judea, the Prince of Peace was born, the Messiah, the Prince, the one who will take the kingdom of this earth and rule for a thousand years and then for all eternity. But before that, the one who sat on God's heavenly throne and therefore all power was given to him in heaven and earth. Because who is the one that has the power in the kingdom? The king. The king who is sitting on the throne. Therefore, Christ fulfilled, or in Christ was fulfilled what he said, that he would sit at the right hand of God and the one who is at the right hand is the one who receives the power. And the one through whom God works, God rules his kingdom. That is why he is made king of the living and the dead, judge, and over all of creation, king because he is sitting at the right hand of God. Now, he has two thrones. Or one throne. Because the throne where he is sitting is God's throne. But he says that to him that overcomes, he will grant to sit with him on his throne. That is not the throne where he is sitting. That is David's throne, which rules the kingdom of David, and it's empty. And the archangel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that God would give the child that she would have the throne of David. And... He would reign over the house of Israel forever. Now, just as Christ is the light of the world, Christ also says of his believers, you are the light of the world. Just as Christ is the bright and morning star, the believers in Christ are also stars. And the messengers are chief stars. Christ says, He that overcomes, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them. In other words, he will govern them with a rod of iron, and as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Let's read it from chapter 2 of Revelation, verse 26. Verse 26 and on. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, 
even as I received of my Father, just as he received it from the Father when he sat on the heavenly throne, likewise he will give the overcomer power over all nations. And I will give him the morning star. They call Venus the morning star, but it's not that he will give him the planet Venus. Let's see which star he will give him in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bride and morning star. In other words, he will receive Christ and he himself will be the angel who comes with the seal of the living God. And the seal of the living God is the Holy Spirit. Christ and Holy Spirit to call, gather, and seal 144,000 Hebrews, 12,000 of each tribe. That is a group that does not belong to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. They will go through the great tribulation and be killed as martyrs in the great tribulation because the Antichrist will kill them. As simple as that. Now, the Holy Spirit, Christ and Holy Spirit, who said on one occasion, say Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. And he ascended to heaven and left and sat on the throne of God. How would he be in Holy Spirit? Since the day of Pentecost, he descended upon his believers and began to seal them with the seal of the living God, with the Holy Spirit. And he has been calling and gathering the elect who will make up his church from stage to stage, from age to age. It has been Christ and Holy Spirit manifesting himself through each messenger, calling and gathering his elect in each age and each stage of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And at this end time, he will call and gather the last elect who will complete the church, and then he will call the elect of the Hebrew people, which are 144,000 Hebrews, 12,000 of each tribe. We have already seen what the bride and morning star is. We have seen that the bride and morning star, the Holy Spirit, has manifested himself in each messenger, which are also stars. They are the seven messengers, seven angels, the seven spirits of God, the Spirit of God manifested in seven messengers for seven stages of the church in the dispensation of grace. And then, at the end time, there will be a great manifestation of the bright and morning star at the last day in the messenger he will have to complete his church and to call and gather 144,000 Hebrews, 12,000 of each tribe. As simple as that. And all of this will be connected to the program of the coming of the Lord for which we are being prepared.
Reverend William Branham says that the angel who gave John the revelation of the book of Revelation is a prophet. And we will stop there because notice what Jesus Christ says about his angel. Chapter 22, verse 6 of Revelation. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. An angel, a messenger, a prophet is the one who revealed to John the book of Revelation, the prophet in whom Christ was manifested. As simple as that. Therefore, it was Christ in Holy Spirit revealing to his church, showing it to John, so that John would write it for the church, all these things that were going to happen. But the instrument, the spirit of a prophet that revealed all these things to John there was the spirit of a prophet, says Reverend William Branham, whom we recognize as the forerunner of the second coming of Christ. It is important to know these biblical truths that are contained here in the book of Revelation and also in the book of the prophet Daniel and in other books that contain prophecies like the Psalms as well and other books of prophets like the book of Zechariah, which shows us how the prophets received God's revelation. It was God, through His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, revealing to the prophets and through the prophets the things relevant to each time. Everything God spoke is speaking or will speak in the future will be through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is Christ in Holy Spirit, Christ in Theophany. Christ in His heavenly body. That is why Christ could say in St. John chapter 8, verses 54 to 58, Your father Abraham desired to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews say to him, You're not yet 50 years old, and you say that you have seen Abraham? Christ says to them, Before Abraham was, I am because he is the I am. There he used the I am like he used it when he spoke to Moses. When Moses wanted to know what was God's name, God said, I am that I am. And you shall say to them, I am has sent me to you. Which chapter? Chapter 3, verses 13 to 16 of Exodus. The angel of the covenant who appeared to Moses, notice, later says, He is the Lord. 
Why? Because God is speaking through his angel, which is his heavenly body, which is Christ in a heavenly body, Christ in a theophanic body, Christ in spirit, because a theophanic body is a spiritual body. In other words, Christ and his heavenly body is the Holy Spirit. As simple as that. Next Sunday, we will be speaking a little more about this subject. Be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. Because the coming of the Son of Man is the only hope for the believers in Christ. There is no other hope for the human being. The global situation offers no hope for human beings. Christ alone is the only hope according to the Word of God. And the second coming of Christ is the only hope for the church, for those who are alive to be changed, the dead to be raised, and all of us to be cut up to heaven and taken to heaven to the marriage supper of the Lamb, to the house of our Heavenly Father. Therefore, be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Bridegroom. Whose Bridegroom? The Bridegroom of the Church, which is typified in a bride, in a wife. St. Paul the Apostle says that he has espoused the Church as a chaste virgin to Christ. So, Christ is the bridegroom and he is going to take his bride church to the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven where they will receive the kingdom. Christ and his bride church will be endued as kings over the planet Earth because Christ is already king over all of creation. So, we have a hope of eternal life, a hope that encourages us to move forward even though the situation of countries is difficult. But notice, it was more difficult in Noah's time. It was more difficult even in the time of the different prophets like Abraham, like Isaac, like Jacob, like the patriarchs who later had to go to Egypt. And the situation there was difficult. After the Pharaoh, who was Joseph's friend, died, then the situation became difficult for the children of Israel, and they became slaves of Pharaoh. But then God had promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 that the descendants, the seed of Abraham, would be in bondage in a land that is not theirs. In other words, not in the land of Israel, but in Egypt. He did not tell them the place because sometimes there are people who, when they're told the problems they will encounter in a certain place, but they must go through that stage they won't go to that place. We have the example of Peter when Jesus said, I am going to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of sinful men by the religious leaders. Peter tells him, May such a thing not happen to you. Don't go there. Jesus says to him, Get behind me, Satan. 
It's because the enemy is the only one who doesn't want the fulfillment of what God has said will happen. And he tells him, How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? Likewise, there are difficult stages in the lives of the believers in which the faith of the believer holds on tighter to God. And God accompanies him, comforts him, and helps him in the different trials. Remember in Deuteronomy chapter 8, which says of Israel, He led you through the wilderness. He suffered you to hunger and thirst to know what was in your heart. Because when things are good, everyone says, I love God. I want to follow God. I'm not going to let go. I don't want to lose the blessing. I don't want to lose all those things. And some people mainly think about the financial aspect. But in good times or bad times, the true believer will remain holding on tight to God. And in our time, when we're preparing ourselves for the coming of the Son of Man, even more so. Therefore, let's hold on tight to Christ, who is the angel of the covenant, the one who delivered the Hebrew people. God, through the angel of the covenant, delivered Israel, using Moses as a veil of flesh, because God had veils of flesh, human temples. Remember that the physical body is a temple for God. The human being is a temple that has an outer cord, which is the body. It has a spirit, which is the holy place, and it has a most holy place, which is the soul, which some call the heart. Therefore, let's be holding on tight to Christ because the Son of Man will come at the hour you do not know. Christ says to his disciples. But when he comes, we will know it. Therefore, there will be a group of believers in Christ of the end time who don't belong to the seven church ages, but instead will be in the golden age of the church, the age of the cornerstone, waiting for the coming of the Lord. It's to the church, to the people of the new covenant, that he comes with blessings for the transformation, the resurrection of the believers who departed, and the rapture or catching away to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Be what then? Prepared. It's the same thing Christ said. Watch, for the Son of Man will come at an hour that you do not know. Watch for the coming of the Lord. To be prepared, watching, waiting for the coming of the Lord. May we not miss it as thousands or millions of people missed the first coming of Christ 2,000 years ago. He came to the people who were under the covenant that was in effect at that time, who were under the covenant, under the law. And the second coming is to those who are under the new covenant, covered by the blood of the new covenant, which is the blood of Christ, our Savior, who form the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the people of the new covenant who will be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. Next Sunday, God willing, we will be having the Bible study that will be titled Be Prepared for the Coming of the Son of Man 
and we will speak as far as God allows us to make known because there are things, there are always things that can't be made known so that God's program is not interrupted. Remember, when Christ came down Mount Transfiguration and said to them, Tell the vision to no man. Tell no one what you saw there in Mount Transfiguration until the Son of Man is taken away, until he dies. Afterwards, then they spoke about their experience on Mount Transfiguration. It has been a great privilege for me to be with you tonight chatting about this subject as an introduction to the subject Be Prepared for the Coming of the Son of Man. May God bless and keep all of you on your way back home and may he watch over you and bless you for all eternity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. With your excuses.